remnant cores of sun-like stars, known as white dwarfs, are extremely common in the cosmos. Many of them have planets that may be located in the habitable zones of their stars and could potentially sustain life. Unfortunately, it's extremely challenging to discover exoplanets orbiting white dwarf stars. A new technique using the James Webb Space Telescope, however, may soon be able to reveal them, along with their possible biosignatures. In this video, we will be talking about the hunting of life around white dwarfs with the help of the James Webb Space Telescope. Why do the white dwarfs collapse? Is it challenging to find planets around smaller red dwarf stars? Is any technique presented to look for the planet? As their lives end, most stars with masses less than eight times that of the sun end up as white dwarfs. There's a lot of mass packed into these old stars. On Earth, 5.5 tons would be the weight of an elephant, but only a teaspoonful of one's stuff would fill that void. A white dwarf has a mass similar to our sun, but a much smaller radius. Our sun and other stars like it use nuclear fusion to convert hydrogen into helium. The hydrogen fuel in white dwarfs has long since been consumed. The inward force of gravity caused by a star's mass counteracts the outward pressure produced by fusion in the star's core. After the star's hydrogen fuel runs out and fusion rates drop, the star will eventually collapse under its weight and burn out. When a star exhausts its fuel, the outward pressure generated by nuclear fusion ceases and the star begins to collapse inward. Despite having the mass of the sun, white dwarfs have about the same radius as the Earth. In the universe, only neutron stars and black holes have a higher density. When white dwarfs collapse to their extreme densities, the electrons in their constituent atoms are squished together, creating a state of matter known as degenerate. The collapse of the once great stars will continue until the electrons exert enough of a pressing force inward to halt the further collapse. A white dwarf with a greater mass has a smaller radius than one with a lower mass because of the stronger gravitational pull that comes with having more mass. This means that after losing so much mass during the red giant phase, no white dwarf can be greater than 1.4 solar masses. Planets orbiting a red giant star are swallowed up by the expanding star. Nonetheless, there's hope for some. According to the white dwarf expert Jay Farihi of the University of Leicester in England, in the search for Earth-like planets, we now have identified multiple systems which are ideal candidates to harbor them. Any terrestrial planets that survive as white dwarfs won't be habitable today, but they could have been the birthplace of life in the past. Scientists have caught a glimpse of the rocky material falling into the white dwarf which is an exciting development. Hubble Telescope, launched in 1990, was the biggest space telescope ever built. In 2018, however, the James Webb Space Telescope surpassed it. Hubble, which is about the magnitude of a school bus, will look like a miniature in comparison to James Webb, which is the length of a tennis court. The most distant objects in the universe will be studied by James Webb. Therefore, the light of the object is strongly lifted towards the red side of the electromagnetic spectrum as it travels more than 13 billion miles. Therefore, the primary mirrors of James Webb are plated with 24 karat gold. Angular resolution, or how sharply a telescope can see, is crucial for space-based telescopes, and James Webb isn't exactly lacking in that regard either. In fact, from about 24 miles away, the telescope could make out the details on a US penny. Due to its increased dimensions, the James Webb Space Telescope is a relatively heavy payload to send into orbit. Therefore, James Webb will be rolled up like an origami during launch so that it can fit into its small compartment. Once the big telescope is in space, it can open up to its full shape. The remnants of sun-like stars, known as white dwarfs, are extremely common throughout the cosmos. Many of these stars have planets that are potentially habitable and could harbor life. Scientists have now laid out a plan for finding that life. Countless planets are thought to populate the Milky Way, with estimates ranging from the hundreds of billions to the trillions. Indeed, a trillion times that amount. Only a few thousand of these planets have been confirmed to exist by astronomers, largely because it is so difficult to find planets. The majority of the extrasolar planets discovered has sun-like host stars and orbit other stars with similar masses. There are a few factors at play here. To start, we're on the lookout for Earth-like planets orbiting other sun-like stars because we want to see if any other life forms out there are possible. Second, stars like the sun are quite common. And third, it's more challenging to find planets around smaller red dwarf stars because they're more frequent than sun-like stars but much dimmer. More than 99% of the stars we've discovered planets orbiting will become white dwarfs, which are carbon and oxygen cores about the size of Earth. There should be a plethora of planets orbiting white dwarfs because sun-like stars are just so common and because all stars eventually cool down to become white dwarfs. Despite this, observations in that region have largely fallen short, yielding only a small number of outlandish cases. A further difficult inquiry is whether or not planets can survive even though their host star dies 
as well as transforms into a red dwarf. It's not pretty to watch a star like a sun die. The star first expands into a red giant as it consumes planets orbiting too close to it. The planet then goes through violent spasms that last millions of years and release massive plumes of material into the solar system, disrupting the equilibrium of the other planets. However, it is still feasible for a white dwarf to have planets despite the violence. It's possible that some planets are sufficiently removed from the center of the storm that they'll be able to maintain their orbits safely. Those planets can get closer to their star through interactions with any newly thrown into the air material from the star. Another possibility is that fragments of the old planets will coalesce into new planets after the dust settles, giving rise to an entirely new planetary system. Theoretically, then, Earth-like planets could be formed around white dwarfs. Their habitable zones, where temperatures are just right for water to exist as a liquid on a planet's surface, would be very near to the white dwarf itself due to the star's low luminosity and small size. Any discovery of Earth-like planets orbiting white dwarfs would have far-reaching implications, both as a new place to look for life in the galaxy and as a key to understanding the ultimate fate of our planetary system. But how exactly would we go looking for this alien civilization? Researchers have published a plan for using the James Webb Space Telescope to search for exoplanets orbiting white dwarfs. They wrote up their strategies in a paper for the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society that was ultimately published. The astronomers propose a much easier way to look for planets around white dwarfs. Just stare at them, as the standard methods of searching for exoplanets or shifts in motion won't happen for white dwarfs. In addition, if a planet were to orbit a white dwarf, it would be unusually warm, especially when compared to the sun's temperature and Earth's. This means that a white dwarf's emitted infrared light would include some heat radiated from an orbiting planet. The exoplanet could be spotted by comparing the combined light to that of a white dwarf's that's also known to be planet-free. A survey of the 15 nearest white dwarfs by the Webb Telescope revealed the possibility of habitable planets in each of their orbits. However, the planet needs to be the right size and temperature for this method to be successful. This technique can detect, for instance, a smaller, much hotter planet or an Earth-like planet that's warmed by greenhouse gases. A planet's absence from the system's total infrared light will be due to its small size or extreme coldness. This technique will also detect the presence of carbon dioxide on an exoplanet if there is a significant amount present. Not only would the discovery of such a molecule be exciting, but it would also warrant further investigation. Please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, if you want to get updated about our newest videos, click the notification bell to never miss one. Goodbye.